for today's agenda. Dorian de Vandeleur will speak about how she's incorporated the Neuron Neuradiant 1070 for a client who has symptoms of both ADHD and Alzheimer's, and she'll discuss the protocols, pre and post QEGs, and the initial outcomes. And this would be a great opportunity to discuss any strategies or considerations for a client who has symptoms of both these conditions. And then we'll have Q and A. So I will share a story about one of my clients. He applied uh, for neurofeedback actually with complaints with attention and memory. And he came in and I will first share his story, his background. So this is him. He gave full consent to share his story. So he is 71 years old and an owner of an antique shop. He is divorced, but he came in with his two daughters who were really sweet and kind and helped help him a lot. He was diagnosed with ADHD in 2017. And he told me that he suffered from a concussion when he was a small boy, he fell off the balcony and broke his nose. So that must have been a really bad injury. They went to the hospital to get the, the check what for, to, to see if there's beginning Alzheimer's. And there were only mild abnormal, abnormalities on the scan. So the doctors were not really sure if he should have the diagnosis. So that's why they looked further for, to see what they can do to improve his mental functions. And four years ago, the situation started to get really problematic. So his symptoms went from only ADHD like to more severe. So these are the symptoms that started four years ago. So short term memory problems. During the intake, I noticed that he told the same story twice. For example, he had episodes of amnesia. One example was that he was at the, at the metro station in Paris and suddenly he couldn't understand where he was and why he was there. And that must have been really scary for him. And yeah, there was another situation one month ago that he was staying over at his sister's house in Germany for a few nights and he woke up and again, he didn't know where he was and he was searching for his own stairs in his house and he didn't understand where he was and he ended up waking up his sister and then still in this really confused state. Another symptom is slow information processing. So this is also something I noticed during the intake when I asked him a question, his answer was not really adjusting to the, to the question. So he didn't understand the context or why I was asking the question. He just gave an answer that was something about the topic a little bit. Yeah, he, also his orientation in space is a problem. So he gets lost easily. So the combination of all these symptoms makes him unable to function properly. And his daughter actually moved in with him to help him. And that is the main problem. So our goal is to make her, his daughter able to move out again. It's a girl from 25 years old. So that's not a really a good situation for her. So. I advised them to, to buy the Neuradiant because they wanted to see if neurofeedback was an option, but I figured that he should do neurofeedback for once a week forever if we would do that, because of course it's a neurodegenerative uh, issue. Uh, so from a financial point of view, it, I figured it would be better if he bought the Neuradiant and he can use it for as long as it's necessary. So they got the Neuradiant and when it arrived, they were a little bit insecure to use it the first time. So I helped them. So they came in and he used the Neuradiant for the first time in my practice. And this was a good opportunity to do testing, of course, before and after. So 
we just went with a QEG before the first usage and, and QEG right after. So there's only 14 minutes between the two measurements that I'm going to show you right now. Yes. So on the left, you see the pre-treatment ice closed QEG. It's measured with the MITSAR, Joe. <laughs> and yeah, we use neural guides. So on the left, you see the pre-treatment QEG and you see that there is slowing in the brain. You see the C scores. So it's a comparison with the norm group that's programmed in neuron. And you see that his delta is, is increased, the delta waves, and the alpha is decreased and his betas are increased. So I think that's the compensation mechanism known yeah that's linked to adhd and also the amplitude asymmetry and coherence and phase lag are impaired so there's a hypo coherence and then on the right side you see the qeg right after the first pbm we use the glow protocol here so i actually uh, couldn't believe what i saw because I have to do a lot of neurofeedback to get yeah, the, the same result. So especially yeah, the, the coherence is normalized. So we started in August with the GLOW protocol and we did it for two weeks. And he did it three times a week. So two weeks, three times a week. And that he noticed. He got a few side effects, headaches after he used it, and migraines. He did have migraines more often when he was really busy or it was a stressful period in his life. So it was something that also showed up. And then we went with an intensity of 50% after that. That went well, no side effects. And after doing that for two more weeks, so he just stuck with it. It di disappeared, the side effects, and it didn't came back since. And then from September, he went with 100% intensity, the glow 40 minutes, and he did it every day. So that went really well. And then he started noticing that after using it, he felt more a, a calm brain. That's what he repeats every time. He feels calmer and less crowded thoughts. So after that, we went with focus. So we added the focus to the GLOW protocol. So from October on, every day he did GLOW for 40 minutes and then focus with a five minute break in between. And that went really well, no side effects. And again, he notices, well, I will tell you in the end about the effects. So I invited him back, him back in for a measurement on the 24th of October. So he had done, I think, two or two and a half weeks of the focus protocol added to the GLOW. And now I will show you the difference between the first measurement we did when he came in for the intake compared to the measurement now in, in October. On the left, you see the pre-treatment eyes closed QEEG again. And then on the right, you see the post-treatment eyes closed QEEG. I must say in, in the intake, he was pretty tired. So there could be some drowsiness in the signal uh, because you see that the delta is increased even more than in the other measurement we did. But you can see for yourself that the, the results, the, the changes are huge. And he did not do any other treatments in this period. I did not yet give any lifestyle advice and we did not do neurofeedback uh, during this time. And what's important to know is that before the, the post-treatment QEG, he, he did use the Neuradiant at home. So it would be maybe interesting to do another time a measurement 
without him using the helmet before doing the measurements. But again, yeah, the results, I, I, I couldn't believe what I saw actually when uh, we did this measurement. Here's another measurement with eyes open. So his QEG looks a bit different with eyes open than it does with eyes closed. But again, all variables normalize during the treatment period. Uh, here I have some images of the of some of the changes that were measurable. So a decrease in frontal slowing with eyes closed. And I because I couldn't believe what I saw, <laughs> I looked into some studies. And it is in line with a lot of the results from the from the studies that are done in 2019. So they also found decrease in frontal slowing with with people with mild cognitive impairments. Yeah. And then normalization of delta and beta power in the eyes open condition. I couldn't find any studies actually about the decreases in delta that, that it would normalize by PBM, but I, maybe someone else knows more about it. And then the, the changes in coherence, that's, that's also something that yeah, previous studies show the same results. So normalization of uh, amplitude asymmetry and coherence was found in other studies. So yeah, the results are, are, are pretty great and yeah, got me totally excited about PBM. Now about his symptoms, of course, I think it's a bit too soon to tell if he has, yeah, if, if he can notice changes in his symptoms. He does report every time that he feels better. He has a calmer mind and yeah, he used to have a really busy head with a lot of thoughts and that's the calm down. But based by his daughter's reports, there are no grand changes in his cognitive functions. So she cannot move out of the house yet, but we are hopeful that it will still come the, the changes that he will notice it. So he did have one more episode of the amnesia one month ago, but of course we, we don't know what would happen if he did not use the PBM because it's a neurodegenerative issue that he has. So it seems like for now his condition is stable and he, it didn't get worse. So maybe that is a good result already and it can improve even a little bit more. So now I will give them some more lifestyle advice. I think it would be good to supplement with omega-3. He is also retired and I think he's not using his brain properly. His daughter also told me that he's watching television a lot and yeah, not doing much else. So it would be good to get him doing more exercise and maybe I will have to discuss with them. It would be good for him to also do some trauma therapy because during our conversations, a trauma from his childhood came up and he didn't have any treatment for that yet. So I think maybe that is also getting in the way of his recovery. So, but that's for now is my uh, story. And I, yeah, I couldn't believe my eyes. I, I know Joel uh, also told us that after one session, he saw a, a big change in, in coherence, I think. So thank you for listening. <laughs>